G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper article about Yowies, thylacines, and thylacaleos in Australia in the early 1900s. So we'll get into it. This was published in the South Coast Times and Wollongong Argus on Saturday, the 26th of December, 1908, titled, Is There a Bunyip? The Aborigines believed in a creature which they named the Bunyip, amphibious by nature and uncanny more than mortal animal. We smile. But what of these many reports from divers and sundry parts of the great bush of queer animals appearing to our own folk? Very circumstantial reports too, difficult to believe and difficult to disbelieve and with all interesting indicating either that the bush makes some people subject to a certain type of freak of imagination or there is something in the bush which has not yet been dreamt of in our zoology. The stories here are given are fair and simple. It is noteworthy that the animal described, except in two as a tiger or like a tiger. One morning in the 80s, the town of Inverell was interested and amused by a story of two young men who had been spending the week, as was then vogue, in a fishing expedition, that they had seen an animal like a gorilla. They made, indeed, an affidavit to the effect before the police magistrate, and so impressed was he that he dispatched a constable, now a sub-inspector, to the place. But the officer returned with the report that he had seen nothing. The place was 20 miles from town on the Guida River, a precipitous gorge and scrub grown into which it is certain very few had ever penetrated. There was a fine deep hole of the river at the bottom. These young men had thrown out their lines and were watching with the patience of their craft when stains began to fall in the water in front of them. They attributed the stones to other fishes from town having observed them and indulging in some fun with them. But the stones were coming perilously close and they became alarmed, jumped up and looked about. They got a glimpse of a gorilla-like animal disappearing. In 1886, the Grafton Argus reported that a constable at Blix River had seen an animal like a gorilla. This is a lone spot on the Grafton Armadale Road at the foot of the Dividing Range. Hereabouts, such a creature might have lived long unseen. Next in chronological order is the story of the Tantanula Tiger, which newspaper readers will remember, this creature appeared to sundry people in Tantanula, South Australia and in Victoria and was for some time a theme of journalistic jest. Later on in the years, the Daily Press reported the schoolmaster at Maroolan, New South Wales, had been confronted on the road with a tiger. About two years ago, the press reported the tracks of a tiger had been seen in the Dimboola district, Victoria, and that the sportsmen of the place were organising a Batu. Last year, it was widely published that two men in the district of Seymour, Victoria, while at work in the bush, had suddenly found themselves in the presence of a tiger. They immediately went home, said the report, and had not recovered the next day from their scare and refused to go back. In December last, the following report appeared in the country news of the dailies. A prospector named Brackenridge had had a startling experience. About three years ago, an animal, which was supposed to be identical with the Tantanilla tiger, was reported to have been seen in the Nandiwa Ranges, about 20 miles from town. 
the animal was shot at and hunted, with unsuccessful results finally disappearing into the thickest of the country thereabouts. Brackenridge, who, was, who has been prospecting these ranges towards Mount Lindsay for gold and diamonds, states one day last week he suddenly came across a large animal of the tiger species near a rock. It was of a brownish colour and utters cries not unlike the howl of a dingo. He says it is a very large animal with an immense bushy tail and had two young cubs with it. He did not approach nearer than 75 yards of it and after getting a good view of it, he turned to his camp to get a rifle and try and shoot it. The animal retiring, however, he stumbled and dislodged some stones, which immediately scared the animal. All three made off rapidly, and although three shots were fired after them, they were not stopped. This port report was from the ruling. This is an item as it was published in the Sydney Morning Herald in August 1908. Brisbane, Monday. A strange story has been told by a resident of the Bay Desert District to the effect that while driving home on Sunday last, a strange animal of a dark or brown colour with glaring eyes made a spring for the horse's head, then followed for about 20 chains and snapped at the horse's hindquarters. Afterwards, the animal was lost to sight. The man arrived home in a state of collapse and the horse was terrified. It is stated that another resident of the locality recently saw a wild bear or tiger lying down asleep. The police investigated the matter, but no trace of the animal was discovered. The police did not consider it necessary to pursue inquiries further, although a request has been made for half a dozen rifles to be sent to the locality. It has been suggested as the explanation that the animals reported are escapees from travelling shows. Not the least of the natural advantages of Australia is the non-existence of dangerous animals. The children may go through the bush to school without fear of being struck down by an armed paw. The only re really formidable plagues of animals indeed are imported ones. Certainly it is an advantage which no care is taken of we freely trust shamen to keep their animals secure, but anyway, a flesh and blood tiger would reveal his identity very soon and often. But these creatures of the stories appear and vanish without leaving a trace. Things you see when you go out without your gun. The end. Oh, this is really interesting. I've done uh, most of these stories before, the Yowie ones and the Big Cat ones. But the, the one from the Rulin near Mount Lindsay and the Nandiwa Ranges, where the um, prospector guy Brackenridge saw, uh, he said over the tiger species, but he said it's of a brownish colour and utters cries, not unlike the howl of a dingo, which is really interesting to me because that like screams uh, thylacine or thylacoleo. And I really loved the bit what he said, like it was a very large animal with a bushy tail and it had two young cubs with it, which is awesome because that means that they're breeding, which is cool. Okay, that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.